day 120 of Ukraine's resistance. This is Media Center Ukraine. My, say, my name is Vasil Samochvalo. We're starting our next briefing. With us is Petro Beshta, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Republic of Lithuania. Ambassador uh, Pane Petra, hello. Hello, Slava Ukraini, Haram Slava. We're starting our conversation perhaps with the latest news. Um, perhaps we'll start with the latest news about the Lithuanian-Russian uh, relationships, which, which, which is you, you could either call it diplomatic tension or maybe more than just diplomatic tension. Could you tell us what is the prehistory of what's happening right now and what is happening right now? The main thing that is happening is the sanctional pressure. Sanctional pressure on Russia is growing, and in spite of whatever they say, it is working. And the story that is de developing with Lithuania and Kaliningrad means that the systemic sanction pressure is growing on Russia, and Russia has to respond somehow. The attack on Lithuania is primarily uh, an attack on the EU and NATO, because Lithuania has not taken any separate steps that would provoke Russia to make these kinds of statements. The story is that in March, uh, the fourth uh, package of sanctions against Russia was uh, approved, which limited uh, a number of goods such as uh, steel, metal metallurgy, and Russia was given a three months uh, transition period after which the sanctions started working. This period has now ended, and Lithuania is simply performing EU decisions on the sanctions uh, towards Russia, because in order to transport these uh, sanctioned uh, goods from the Russian territory to the territory of Kaliningrad, they have to go through Lithuania. So Lithuania has become the center of this attack. And it's very important to note that uh, Russia is trying, in addition to general rhetoric, uh, Russia is trying to attack specific countries, specific EU countries and specific NATO countries and pressure specific countries in order to um, weaken the unity um, and test the solidarity of the EU and NATO, uh, the, the readiness to support their members in uh, fighting Russian provocations. This case is a good illustration. It has shown that Lithuania is um, holding, so are the EU and uh, NATO. Uh, Josep Borrell has made a statement, the US have made a statement, who have come up with, uh, who have remembered the Article 5 of NATO. There is a statement by Britain, there's a statement by Germany. And Ukraine, of course, supports uh, Lithuania in this situation as well. This is very important, uh, specifically about NATO, because the response of the world, or sorry, the response of the NATO members to these kinds of threats and the response uh, to the threats to Ukraine are different, because Lithuania is protected by its NATO status. But I think Mr. Nauseda, if I'm not mistaken, he said that next week at the NATO summit in Madrid, he will raise the Russian question. Do you know what he, what, what he will be talking about and what he will be asking his colleagues and partners in, in, in NATO? Of course, um, the timing of the NATO summit has to be taken into account. First of all, you have, we have to take into account the position of Lithuania and other Eastern European countries. And their position is very simple. They They're clearly raising um, um, the question that the, of the, 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 the Russian threat growing, and so the NATO policy has to proceed from the fact that these threats will be long term, and the demands Lithuania's demands uh, consist in switching to a defensive strategy on the eastern flank, which means increasing the NATO presence in the territory of Eastern European countries. So Lithuania will, is raising the question of uh, increasing uh, NATO brave armies and NATO battalions presence, br make, bringing battalions to the level of brigades and having uh, NATO brigades in Lithuania, m much like in other countries, that would then uh, create the possibility of defending these states in case of a uh, Russian attack. So. This really uh, shortens the response time for NATO. And I think that the NATO su summit, um, in connection with these provocations uh, from Russia, will lean increasingly towards uh, looking at these Russian threats and strengthening the defensive uh, position. The EU summit that um, 
and the and the hypothetical uh, gaining of Ukraine's uh, candidacy status of the EU. What is what is said about this in Lithuania? Lithuania is a is a champion of Ukraine's uh, Euro-Atlantic integration. Lithuania has supported Ukraine systemically. Uh, Ukraine's application to EU membership. It was the first state to sign the declaration of support. It was among the states uh, that constantly and everywhere support uh, and promote this idea, lobby this idea, champion the interests, Ukraine's interests of uh, membership in uh, European structures. So this, uh, at the, uh, so at this stage, uh, when 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 there was uh, when in d these needs these these. these these actions needed to be intensified. Lithuania continued to lobby and support the candidacy of Ukraine. And yesterday, even uh, the presidents had a conversation. Uh, b b they they kind of uh, checked their, um, made sure they were on the same page and uh, talked again about the steps and the positions that Ukraine has to do with Lithuania to ensure a positive result. We believe it. If there are any questions in the room, I'm prepared to take the questions. Go with Estonian uh, public broadcasting. Um, has there been a Lithuanian uh, response to the reported German uh, decision who were first were going to send troops to Lithuania and then reneged and said they won't foreign base them? And that's a concern because it's such a narrow area between Kaliningrad and Belarus uh, called the Suwaki Gap. There's a question of whether or not NATO can get to that narrow gap uh, aid to Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania in time. Even if there were any doubts about the 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 the, 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 the stance on the reinforcement, the positions that are, the, the the events that are taking place now uh, strengthen the likelihood of these positive decisions because everyone can see that these aren't hypothetical threats. That you can't. Uh, this is not nothing to be joked with. Um, this is nothing to be trifled with, and so I think that this tension prior to the NATO summit will uh, help. Will support the the the, the adop adop adoption of a positive uh, s decision. My, I have a question uh, for my part. Um, there is an impression, and colleagues have said this, that Russian propaganda after this collapse of the first few months are, is again rearing its head and the main narratives that, that are being promoted is that Ukraine is incapable of winning or Russia cannot lose. Um, secondly, that the support of Ukraine by Europe and the world leads to an economic disaster. To what extent is the Russian propaganda voice heard in Lithuania? Again, Lithuania was among the first states to ban uh, Russian broadcasting in its territory right after the aggression of uh, February 24th. Um, Lithuania, like nobody else, uh, have a very profound and very subtle understanding. And so their, their, their counter counteraction of Russian, Russian narratives is a priority for them. We're working very hard with, uh, with very closely with Ukraine in the area of combating disinformation and we think that we don't think that Russia is capable of making armed threats towards uh, NATO members in Lithuania, and so the main resources and energy will be aimed and are being aimed at these hybrid methods, hybrid at attacks, such as uh, cybersecurity and disinformation. So disinformation is is a priority uh, uh, for Russia, and uh, Lithuania no understands this really well. Uh, and the martial law that has been prolonged until uh, March, uh, sorry, until until f September, um, is of course one another way to counteract these these things. Of course, these mechanisms are working. Uh, they're tracing these narratives and trying to counteract these uh, narratives on a systemic basis. Thank you very much. With us was Petro Bashta, ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the Republic of Lithuania. We will see you in an hour to talk with uh, representatives of the media, uh, media environment in Ukraine, media milieu in Ukraine, to talk about journalistic